A number of impressive throws by you today. Uh, I, I love the one personally, the one you were in the seven on seven toward the end of practice where you kind of flipped it to Der, uh, Derek Dieter. Mm-hmm. Kind of you were moving to your left, couldn't step in it. You just kind of snapped your wrist. When you just go through the video and you see those kinds of things, do you, you stop to say, wow, that was pretty cool? Or, or do you just kind of, you know, you kind of immune to those things now? Number one. Number two, um, Alex Smith, as you know, has been cleared to practice again. What, what that kind of means to you to see him back and, uh, playing football again. Yeah, to, to answer your first question, uh, I think the 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 great thing about uh, training camp practices and and practices with Coach Reed is he allows me to try those different things. And uh, uh, as you've kind of seen camp go, there's been times where I've made some of these throws and and they've worked out and we scored touchdowns. And then I, I threw one one day and it was like a easy interception. So he lets you try those different things and you just learn from them, see what you can and can't do. And uh, it helps me to be in the game when I get there. I know what I can do and what I can't. And then uh, the second part of your question, I mean, uh, Alex, is, it's an amazing thing. I talked to Alex. Uh, I texted Alex before the season, uh, got it going for training camp, got going. Uh, him just uh, get being there and being able to uh, get cleared by his doctors and then now getting cleared by the, uh, the Washington's doctors uh, and being able to go out there and, and be able to perform. It just shows the grit that he has. And, I mean, he's someone that uh, helped me out a ton in my career, and he's always persevered. And I just uh, expect him to keep persevering as his career goes on. Let's go to Herbie. Go ahead, Herbie. Hey, Patrick, um, two questions here for you. Your impression so far of uh, Clyde Edwards-Alaire as, as he's gone through two padded practices, obviously he was limited today, but how much did um, working with him during the summer help him develop into what you're seeing now? And then lastly, Eric Enemy yesterday said that you were a, quote, competitive prick, end quote, uh, obviously in a good way. But what was your reaction when you heard uh, EB call you that? Uh, yeah, well, the, uh, the, first, the first part – of your question. I mean, Claude, I think has done a, a great job in, in the reps that he has gotten. I mean, he's, he stepped in, he's learned the offense. Uh, he's not making a lot of mistakes. He, he's playing fast and he has an incredible vision. I think that's what's, what's been the, the big, the biggest thing so far is able the way he's able to run the ball, find the, the lanes of running in and catch out the backfield and get upfield and make plays happen. Um, for him to be able to do that so early, it's a, it's a great sign and he'll keep getting better and better. Um, and, and then yeah, the second part with EB, I mean, it's just kind of uh, in our nature, I think, not even just me and, and EB's name. We love to compete. We, we're, we're fiery. We love to go out there every single rep. We act like it's the last rep that we have to win. And I think we have a lot of guys on, on the team that are like that's when you get the uh, best on Sunday. So uh, I'm going to go out there and compete every single rep, and I'm going to have that fire uh, every single time. Let's go to James Palmer. Go ahead, James. Hey, Patrick, curious – what your take is, a lot of people around the league say you kind of want your pass catchers to be almost like a basketball team, you know, with a variety of kind of sizes and, and, and talents. How do you feel your group fits that? And do you kind of like that moniker from the quarterback spot that it's it's set up, it could be set up like that? I think the thing that I've learned uh, in my short career so far in the NFL is you can have all types of different types of weapons as long as you're utilizing their skill sets and maximizing those uh, every single day. I think that you can, it could be the basketball team. You could have the big receivers making the plays over the top. You could have the small receivers doing the stuff in the slot. But I think you see with our team, it's a lot of different guys that can do a lot of different things. And so when you have a team like we have, uh, it's hard for defenses to nail exactly what we're doing, uh, exactly who's running which routes, because every single person can do every single route. And I think that, that's what makes our offense uh, go and makes us uh, every single week be able to be uh, variable and, and change and really uh, be able to execute and have high success. Let's go to Vahe. Go ahead, Vahe. Hey, Patrick. Um, just going back to that point you just made about having that fire, you won the MVP your first season as a full-time starter, and then you guys win the Super Bowl. What, what, what is, what's, what's prompting that? How do, you, how do you still feel that you've had so much achievement early? Where does that come from? Yeah, I think that's just for the that's just the love of the game. I think uh, when you play this sport, the best thing about it is you get to start over every single year. Um, every single year, no matter if you won the Super Bowl the last year, no matter if you lost an AFC championship game, no matter if you didn't make the playoffs, you get a clean slate. You have to go out there and compete every single year. And you have to have the passion and the mindset that you're going to go out there every single day and execute every single rep so you can go out there and be on top again uh, and uh, be able to have those parades, be able to enjoy it with your, your teammates and your family and your friends. And uh, once that, that you enjoy it, you, you come back and do it again the next year. Let's go to Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Pat, yesterday would have been uh, the first preseason game. Typically, Andy would have given you a series or two um, and then ramped you up from there. I was curious, what do you think you might be missing without having those dress rehearsals? And then how do you plan to maybe make up for that and be ready for the, the Thursday night opener? 
Yeah, I think the uh, the only thing that I think I, that you're missing is just not me not getting hit. So uh, just not getting that first tackle out of the way of the season and, and getting up and having to go through the go through the reps again and, and making plays happen. But uh, other than that, I think uh, our practice, how we run practices, when you have the honey badger over there yelling and screaming and and, and firing around, flying around the field, Frank Clark doing the same, Chris Jones. Uh, we're, we're, we're going the best against the best uh, right here at our practices. And we, I promise you we're going hard every single rep. And there's a lot of fire, a lot of passion on that field. So uh, other than me personally not get it, getting tackled, that first tackle out of the way, I feel like I'm getting uh, just as what I would be getting in the preseason game. Let's go to Sam Ellinger. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, Patrick. Um, we know what you think of the, uh, your ranking in the top 100. Right. Um, I'm curious what you think of Mitch Schwartz dropping off the list. And do you, do you have a theory on why he seems to be sort of underrated when it comes to awards and that kind of thing? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think uh, obviously the position gets underrated a lot. I mean, the right tackle position uh, uh, just throughout history. I mean, for the, the guys like Lane Johnson and, and Mitch Schwartz that have been doing it year in, year out, Ryan, Rebs, Ryan Ramschek, all those guys. I mean, I know he was on there, but they've they've done it year in and year out and it had a lot of high success. And so. Uh, I think uh, with Mitch, it's, it's it's crazy to not see him on that list with how he how clean he keeps the pocket, how he does in the run game, how he he's really done a, been a great player for a long time. But I think uh, we we understand as a group that we're going to go out there and when you when you win Super Bowls, when you do these different type of things, everybody's going to get get the recognition that they that they're going to get after the after their career is over. And I think that's what you'll see with Mitch is once his career is over, and you look back on it, you'll see how great uh, of a player he's been uh, from beginning to the end of it. All right, guys, we've got time for a few more. Let's go to Darren first. Go ahead, Darren. Uh, Patrick, good morning to you. Uh, first off, you, look, uh, what challenges does it pose for your offense to come up with new plays that your opponents haven't seen since you returned everyone on offense, save for Clyde? And in a second, I'll be speaking with your dad a little bit later on the show. What made you decide on the gift that you got him for his birthday and how shocked was it that uh, when he received it? Yeah, so uh, the, the, the first part, the first part, I mean, I think uh, when you have Coach Reed and, and these offensive coaches that we have, there's no sh shortage of plays. I mean, they're, they're coming up with different plays every single day. And, uh, we're, I mean, we're trying out everything. I think that's the best thing about training camp. The best thing about going against our defense, which, which is so multiple, is we're getting a lot of different looks against a lot of different plays that we, that we haven't ran before. And so uh, I think that that's that's great about training camp is we're going to keep trying these plays. And if it works, we're going to put it in. If it doesn't work, we might push it to the side and try it again later on. Um, and then with my dad, I, I, uh, I ended up getting him the car, uh, the Escalade. And it's just a car that he had whenever I was whenever he was when I was young and he was in the MLB. I remember him having the black Escalade. So I ended up getting him one for his birthday. Let's go to Harold. Go ahead, Harold. Hey, uh, Patrick, hope you're doing well. And that's a nice gift you're giving them. Uh, two quick questions, one on, one off the field. When it comes on the field, have you learned anything differently from the receivers that they kind of want to do different going into this season when it comes to building rhythm on the field and getting that on the practice field? And then off the field, I want to ask you about Travis Kelsey. Uh, just, you know, his foundation and, and what he's doing and buying that building for inner city kids. I know you've done it. Tyreek's done it. Just what is all your conversations, guys, going to well to try to better the Kansas City community? Yeah, to ask your first question one more time for me real quick. Oh, just what have you learned differently from receivers, if anything, okay. try to build a rhythm on the field and getting getting things going? Yeah, the, the, the first question, um, I think the best thing, kind of like I, I've been saying in training camp, is we try out a lot of different things. I think when you get those routes routes on air and you get those one-on-one -on -one drills, and then when you get the, the, the reps in practice, you see how guys are running routes, how we're trying different stuff, and then we go to the sideline after and we talk about those routes, why they did this, what I was thinking, what they were thinking, and we try to get on the same page in order to, when we get in the game, we know exactly what each other's thinking and we can really go out there and, and execute at a high level. And I think that, that, that how Coach Reed runs practice sets up perfect for that. And then the, the second part, I mean, it, it was awesome to see what Travis did with that, with that uh, building, the, with, with uh, the Operation Breakthrough. It, it's, it's crazy because I remember over a year ago, he was talking about trying to buy that building. He was talking about the plan of doing that. And, and, he, and to see it finally go through, obviously, the, he earned the contract, got the contract. And then this first thing was I make sure that he did the thing that he'd been planning on for over a year. Um, it just shows how much – he, he's put into this community uh, that has given him so much. And then I feel like throughout our entire team, we try to do the same. And I think when you have leaders that, that do that, it, it brings everybody else with us. And uh, I think Kansas City, uh, the, the Chiefs have done a, uh, had a great history of giving back to the Kansas City community, and we're going to try to keep that going. Let's go with Nate Taylor for the last one. Go ahead, Nate. 
Hey Patrick, thanks again for this. Um, you mentioned earlier the idea of experimentation. And one thing that I've sort of noticed you doing early in practice is sort of doing a, a forward pitch in some passes. Just how much of that has been part of your experimentation? And how much of that do you just enjoy year after year trying to find something new that you can sort of use to the benefit of the team because Andy gives you that freedom to do it in practice? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to give away all my secrets, but I mean, yeah, it's stuff that I, stuff that I work on and stuff that, that we do. I mean, I try to find ways to get the ball to the receivers, tight ends, whoever, running backs, whoever it is, the quickest way possible. And uh, the, the pitch was one thing that we had kind of worked on, stuff like that. Um, I think I saw either Brett Favre or Aaron Rodgers do it in one of the games. I was watching one of those throwback games and so uh, with the Green Bay Packers. And so I try to look at what guys have done before me. Uh, I know I've, I've looked at guys like Dan Marino uh, and how he had success. Uh, and then I look at the guys that are playing around the league with Deshaun Watson and Lamar and, and Dak Prescott, all these guys that are, that are having success. And I try to find what they do. And then I try to take it out and put it into my game. And so I can be a better player every single time I step on the field.